What did you see in terms of competitiveness and also uh, defensively at the rim? A couple block shots on, yeah. on uh, Donovan Mitchell. Yeah, competitiveness was there, um, all the guys. Um, and then uh, just a willingness to defend on the team. You know, they're a great team. They got really talented players. And, you know, one person can't do it by themselves. It takes everybody. And uh, we had some really good team defensive possessions and some good team offensive possessions. Joe, you, you, you put up 120 points, but you're saying there were stretches of the good offense. Do you think there's another level for you guys to go offensively? Yeah, I think so. I think both ends of the floor. I think if you really if you want to get to where you want to get to against teams like this, you, you can always fight for another level. And so I think the balance of uh, knowing you've done a lot of good things, but also knowing you know uh, there's like 10 to 15 possessions, and that's what we've said all year, uh, win or lose. There's 10 to 15 possessions you want to clean up, so just working through those. And uh, just having that, that, that mindset of like getting better every day. And when you say, you always like to say that the success looks different every night. This is a night where Jalen was, was going early and uh, Derek and, and, and maybe Jason wasn't his usual self offensively. Like, is that kind of like fall into the, what you're saying and, and, and where you can go offensively? Yeah, I mean, it's, gonna, like, and it's funny, the usual self, like uh, I thought he played an uh, overall well-rounded uh, game. Uh, passing, his screening allowed for uh, those other guys to get open looks uh, because of his screening. Uh, in the half court, and uh, he had some good shots at the rim defensively. So, it, it, like you said, success will look different for every night for for each player. Uh, but at the end of the day, you can't be defined by one thing, and uh, we got to compete at both ends of the floor. I thought our guys did that, you know, for most of the night. Uh, when Derek takes twelve shots, you've won twenty-one straight of those now. You haven't lost since January. When you see him taking a lot early on. What does that do for the team, just overall the offense? How does it impact his activity on defense? It's just how is important is it for him to be aggressive? Uh, it's important because it means uh, usually the shots that he takes are because uh, we're either out in transition, uh, we set really good screens and he has that, or there's two-on-ones and we're making extra passes. So I think when those guys get more and more shots, it means we're getting to the different layers uh, of our offense, which is important against a team like this. And Joe over here, just to follow up on Derek, he has a career high 38 the other night, follows it up with 25 and 25. What can you say about the way he's playing for this team right now? Uh, well, uh, on both ends of the floor. Um, you know, he's the kind of guy that can impact the game differently every night. Uh, whatever the game calls for, he's willing to do. And uh, he's done that, and uh, we need him to continue to do that. You guys had a tough shooting night in the first half. Um, they had some stretches of really good shot making. But you were able to just kind of control the game anywhere, grab control of it then. What about the team allows you to kind of do that and kind of chip away at it and hold on to the game until you're able to get the big run? Uh, just managing the game. Uh, you know, you're always going to go through stretches of shot making and not shot making. It's the other stuff that puts pressure on uh, when you turn it over, when you put guys to the free throw line, uh, when you have empty possessions because of not good shots, and when you give up shots that uh, you know you, you don't want to. So I think even with the stretches of, uh, like you said, um, poor shot making. I thought we were doing all the other stuff really well. I think they only shot five free throws in the first half. They only had uh, five offensive rebounds or three offensive rebounds in the first half. And we only had like five or six turnovers. And so managing the game on those margins uh, allows us to play through uh, just the typical stretches of the game. Joe, just a, a thought on you talked earlier this week about the difference of you guys having rest versus them coming off game seven. What did you see from your team from the start and, and as, as it progressed as the night went uh, on? Yeah, highly competitive. Um, you know, not sharp in every single area, not which is naturally going to happen, but highly competitive, highly intentional on trying to execute the things that uh, are important for us for winning. Over here, John. Uh, Cornette comes in, gets that block, gave you some fairly spirited minutes. Can you speak to his contributions tonight? Uh, tremendous. Him, Peyton. Uh, X, Sam, those guys, like great minutes by all those guys. Luke, you know, started that off. And, you know, it goes back to um, moments of the, of the regular season. You can't be a good team unless those guys win you games. And they've all uh, played a huge part in winning games, whether it's, you know, four and five nights, back to backs, it doesn't matter. Uh, they bring it. And it's important to have guys like that. And I thought Luke's presence was big for us tonight. Last two questions, Gary. Joe, uh, Jalen, 32 points and 18 shots, one turnover. Can you kind of touch on his evolution this season? Yeah. Th that's he's just gotten so much better in terms of decision making, taking care of the ball, just kind of being so efficient. Yeah, he takes a ton of pride in just growing as a player uh, every year, every game, every day. Spends a lot of time on it. He's not afraid to go after something that he knows he can improve on, which I think is huge for his growth mindset. And 
Like you said, he has involved his ability to pick and choose his spots, when to play in a transition. Uh, he had a couple times where he scored in transition, and two plays later he slowed it down, went mid-pick and roll, and made the right play. Uh, I think the growth of him, even if he scores six or eight in a row and he gets into the paint, it's, it's a pass on uh, the next one. So, um, you know, he's grown as a player, and uh, it, it's helped us, and, you know, he's playing big stretches for us, so it's important. Joe, how do you think the bigs handled things without Porzingis? You spoke about Luke, but also X and, and yeah. Al. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not just on the bigs, it's on everybody uh, to rebound, uh, to play physical, to communicate. Uh, so I thought Al and, and Luke and X did a good job from the big standpoint, but it's on everybody to be able to do that. And uh, I think everyone did that. Uh, you've talked all year about sacrifice and how everybody's been willing to take less shots or not worry about their own individual stats. And I think we're really seeing that now during this playoff run. Um, do you think that there's something that's been unique about this particular group? Is it you know maybe their age or the, the, their playoff experience that's enabled them to buy in so much so people really aren't worried about their output? Um, I mean, every team is different. I think uh, timing has a lot to do with that. I think you have a bunch of guys that have been through a lot around the league. Uh, and when you get them together, sometimes the perfect time allows for that. So every guy's been through different uh, experiences throughout their career. And we're at the point now where uh, winning is the most important thing and nothing can get in the way of that. doesn't mean it's going to be perfect, but uh, the guys do a great job of, of holding that standard, I think, because of what they've been through in their careers. Uh, you know, and you just have to keep fighting for that. You know, it's more important than winning and the, with the process towards winning. Thanks, Joe. Thanks.